Hello visionaries and welcome back to our channel. This is Raquel of Raquel and Davidian and your genius. And in this video, we're going to be talking about rave cosmology. Now the rave cosmology in human design is all the way through the rabbit hole. It's like peeling the onion of human design, finding out in the core there's a huge black hole and then diving in the center of the black hole and coming out into a universal expression of self. Yeah. It truly, truly is remarkable. Ra brought forward this information, the founder of human design, Ra Uruhu, in a way to sort of aura mechanically explain his experience with the voice, which is basically his download that he received download of the human design information. Through this rave cosmology, we're introduced to how we speak to the other side, how we speak to the unknown, the mystical path, and all those things woo and spiritual that they often don't talk about in human design, but as you know, that is my background. And so this is a topic that is dear to my heart. And I cannot wait to introduce the material to you and to bring you the introduction of rave cosmology, what it means, and how you can begin embodying some of the mystical in your life. So I will look forward to seeing you on the inside. So we're going to be talking about Ra Uruhu and the encounter with the voice. Ra Uruhu was the human design system's founder and messenger. This encounter lasted for eight days and nights during which he received a transmission of information, what is known today as the human design system. So there's very little information on this encounter. There is a pretty detailed YouTube video where Ra Uruhu himself talks about the experience. But other than that, there is very little about what happened and also what happened based on his actual human design aura mechanics, which in human design is how we look at everything. We look at human behavior through the mastering of this system. And so to contemplate this encounter through the human design intel is incredibly interesting. So Ra Uruhu does talk about his personal encounter through the rave cosmology courses. And this is an incredibly interesting study that I'm going to be diving more into in an upcoming course with my community. If this is something that feels incredibly intriguing to you as it is to me and a lot of the uh, clients I've been working with, then go ahead and email me at support at RaquelRena.com and I'll put some notes in the description below if this is something you would like more information about. So according to Ra, living correctly in your motivation and being on your cross, meaning your incarnation cross, that is, and motivation is the energy beneath the surface it's the color so normally in human design you look at your chart and you're looking at the line numbers which is the profile your gates your undefined and defined centers your aura type all of these things we have a lot of videos on we also do have a lot of videos on motivation there are six different motivations and they're called color and your color is based on the personality sun and earth in the chart. I do have a couple of videos on that. I will also post in the descriptions below. But according to Ra, if you're living correctly in your motivation, then it aligns you to possible encounters as well. So not only does it align you to the right path, the right 
people, the right career, as you live correctly as yourself, but also as you live correctly, you are making yourself available to the supernatural, to these levels of encounters. And so the way I like to think of this is you open the door to the other side, the side of mystery, the side of information, the side where you're exposed to higher intelligence than what's available to us through the limited perception of the mind. So this is empowering. And it brings with it wisdom, transformation, and education. So as we have these possible encounters, we open ourselves up to a huge field of information that we can then bring forward to humanity in a new way. When we're in our right mind, meaning outside of the mind, meaning the mind isn't controlling our lives. The mind isn't constantly chattering. The mind isn't making decisions for you. The mind isn't going off on what happened 10 years ago. It isn't endlessly ruminating over past conversations. It's not daydreaming endlessly about the future. It's actually able to take a back seat and be the passenger. Then we can see these encounters properly. We open ourselves to not just having this higher knowledge, wisdom, but we also are able to interpret the higher wisdom properly. In order to interpret these properly, we look at these archetypal mythological entities like the angels, the demons, the ghosts, the gods, the entities, and the aliens with the awareness of our own personal aura mechanics. And we learn how to interpret the wisdom of these forces that are exposed to all of us at all times in a more clear way. So in other words, if you think of your not self, where we're undefined, those undefined centers are absorbing and amplifying as well as distorting the energy from the defined people, people who are defined and they're in our aura we are unable to interpret that energy. So if you're undefined and you're around a defined person who's sad, you're amplifying and distorting it and thinking it's you. And so that sadness becomes maybe a depression that's overwhelming. And that depression that's overwhelming leads you down paths that you wouldn't normally go through if you weren't actively deconditioning and understanding that that energy is not you. Well, it's a similar type of idea when it comes to these notions of the angels, the demons, the ghosts, the gods, the entities, and the aliens. It's that when we're not properly in alignment with our truth, we have these mythological experiences, we distort them, we misinterpret them, and we don't understand the message. So look around at humanity, look around at how we distort the gods. My God is better than your God. If you do this sort of heinous activity, strapping a bomb on your back and blowing up a, you know, a train station, you're going to go to heaven. And that's all in the name of God. These type of distortions are seen throughout humanity, throughout our history, And now through this human design intel, not only do we get to live correctly, we also get to interpret and understand how these energies have been so brutally misinterpreted and forced upon humanity. And these insights that we can bring forward from Ray's rave cosmology shed so much light on how these um and how the ways that humanity has used and abused these mythologies so there are millions maybe trillions of personality crystals 
that according to Ra haven't fully transitioned into their afterlife and they're sort of hovering in what he calls this bardo stage which you could maybe think of as you know people that haven't fully awakened into their higher expression of their next life or in as they've transitioned they weren't conscious enough to be able to transition properly and Ra Uruhu talks about this a lot, is that if you don't die properly, you're not able to transition properly. And I believe this to be more about being active in our communication about death and not being so afraid to talk about it as a culture and allowing people to really understand the more awareness we have, the more we can have a beautiful transition, a conscious transition. So what Ra Uruhu is saying is that the neutrino stream um, is 3 million a second penetrating every inch of the planet all the time. So there's a lot of information coming at us. And according to Ra, every single person on the planet has a, a gen genetic predisposition, meaning your aura mechanics, your design is going to interpret that frequency. And what he means by that frequency is the frequency of disembodied personality crystals. So people have transitioned, but not quite made it all the way across what some people might see as ghosts or energies that are lingering. Um, some people call these entities as well, where, you know, a lot of people say that if you are an addict, you open yourself up to a lot of these forces that can take over the vehicle and all of these things, which are not really spelled out in any type of clarity. Obviously, there's a lot of scientists that may disagree with all of this information because obviously they can't, you know, prove it. Um, and yet, if you're a spiritual practitioner and you're able to see beyond the veil and you've had these types of experiences, you know that there are some truths. And if you've had encounters of any kind of your own, you also know that there is truth. And also, you can't deny what happened to Ra Uruhu because the intel is through experiential knowledge, which means he's not asking you to just believe his encounter. He's saying, this is the education. This is the intel. Try it on for yourself. And it is incredibly game-changing, life-changing, and awakens people to such incredible truths. So his encounter had a huge impact on many, many people. And so what we're saying is that the information in these encounters is revealed more deeply when you understand your design. And so the meaning here is how you are designed initiates your interpretation of the supernatural. So if you ask me, that is so profound. You know, we're understanding through human design how to operate correctly, who's emotional, who's not, who's more prone to holding on to things, who is more prone to um being individual, being tribal, all of these things are so profound to now expose that with your human design, you're able to more clearly understand and interpret the supernatural. Well, this opens an entirely new dynamic when we're talking about spirituality and human design. So most people are so in their mind, they're so caught up in the chatter that they do not notice the bundles around us, or they really don't notice the energies that are surrounding us. They don't notice, they haven't had encounters, they haven't had witnesses of, you know, people on the other side and things like this. But those people who are willing to quiet their mind and open themselves up they're able to see more than the average person. There's a lot of potential hanging around us, according to Ra. The Virgin Marys, the aliens, the ghosts, 
But what we see and how we interpret these energies is based on our design. So when you look at the other side, you come into contact with the original bundles, the gods, the entities, the aliens. And according to Ra, this is what people refer to as more of the Buddha, the Christ consciousness or other alien energies that people are channeling. The original bundles represent the colors four, five, and six, and they operate very differently than the colors one, two, and three. So four, five, and six would be the colors of motivation, need, guilt, and innocence. And again, this is incredibly complex. There's a lot of information here, and I am going to be going deeper and deeper into this rave cosmology because I'm incredibly fascinated by it. But this is just a general introduction to this information. The one, two, and three, meaning the colors one, two, and three, which are fear, hope, and desire. These three are all very deeply personal. The encounter is to fix your color personally. The four, five, and six is the other to help fix their color. And what I mean by fix the color is what I'm saying is if you know motivation, you know that motivation flips into transference. And most of us, most of humanity is living in their transference. And so they're not properly motivated. They're motivated by their not self theme, basically. And so if you're, if an encounter happens and you're here to share with everyone, meaning you're four, five, and six, then you're here to express the encounter, get it out and help people fix their color to their proper motivation so they're not flipping into transference. They're so these encounters happen in three stages, the trigger, the encounter, and the education. And so you'll notice with Ra Uruhu, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into his trigger, but then he had the encounter. And then, of course, the human design and all of the Jovian archive and his work is the education from that one encounter. He has hours and hours and years and, you know, volumes of information about human design and it's layers deep and it is one of the most profound studies that I've ever experienced. I think the I Ching is incredibly profound as well and it does base a lot of it from that uh, but he the way it's put together is really unbelievably unique. So the further you go into the rave cosmology, you discover that Ra Uruhu says that his encounter was triggered by a demon, not to scare you, okay? Now, I'm going to break all of this intel down as I go deeper into this in, in, in these courses, but triggered by the demons is really not something that I want you to be afraid of. It's a word that he uses, and what he's saying is that when we're in our not-self, that's when we misinterpret and that's when we create these really scary, you know, crazy looking demons and ghosts and goblins and all of this stuff. And he's saying that that is from the not self misinterpretation of these forces. So Ra loved to be a heretic and he loved to shock. So when he says triggered by a demon, he knows it's going to shock people and scare them and maybe even push them into, you know, their own not self fears. So this is why I want to bring forward this information in a way to like right up front, let you know that this isn't a scary thing. It's about energies that have information that it, when you see them correctly, you won't misinterpret what you're looking at. So he says he was triggered by a demon led by a ghost and all the information was presented by an entity. Again, don't let these words scare you. Only the mind's interpretation will spin the fear. Again, a lot of people are afraid of this word entities. You know, we want all of our transmission to come from the angels, from the gods. 
And so he's trying to break all of this down for you. Where do all these mythologies come from? Where are all these sightings of the Virgin Mary and the aliens? And, you know, where does this all come from? And so I love this Intel, the rave cosmology where he breaks it down. It goes very, very deep into all of these places so that we can uncover and expose them within our own psyche. And only the mind, like I said, will spin the fear. So I just want to leave you guys with a quote from Ra Uruhu, who wanted to share a little bit about the ghosts. So he says, I want to tell you a secret. I have a ghost. Its name is Who. Now, if you remember, Ra Uru Who is the third part of his name. And he did change his name after the encounter. I have a ghost and the ghost has been a passenger for years and years. As a matter of fact, the door was opened up during my eight day experience with the voice. I consciously invited him in. I was told to by the voice. I'm a third color. It's sitting in the back seat. It speaks occasionally. It usually comes out as poetry. It's very personal. It's not your ghost. It's my ghost. It's very personal. It's nice to have company. Ra Uruhu. Ra was triggered by a demon. He had a ghost for an encounter and his teacher was an entity. So as we go through this information, the Ra rave cosmology will help you sort through any voices that you've had, any encounters you may have experienced, any misinterpretations you may have had also might help you understand religion a little bit more. And when someone has maybe forced a God or God's will onto you, as opposed to you understanding that interpretation for yourself. So I'm truly excited about going deeper into this. I'd love to hear your feedback and I'd love to hear your thoughts. So the encounter can be quite sophisticated at the aura mechanic level. And according to Ra, the homogenized world misperceives everything they are seeing when it comes to these angels, demons, ghosts, entities, gods, and aliens. And we all know this. We see this. You know, some of the most intense wars are fought because of this misinterpretation. We see many people have these types of experiences who might actually end up mentally ill or unable to, to handle the nature of the encounter. It all works through you, through your lens. So what we're looking at in the rave cosmology is the aura mechanics of these encounters, the channelings, the angels, the demons, the ghosts, the aliens, source, love, God, entities. They're all explained by the aura mechanics and they all have a supernatural explanation through human design. So I myself have had encounters. I have had a lot of experiences with the supernatural. And I've really kept a lot of this to myself. And after really uncovering and diving deep in the rave cosmology, my color is designed to share what I have learned through these encounters, which is part of why I'm inspired to bring this information out to you. Have you ever experienced any of these voices? I am looking forward to hearing more about your experiences. If you've had any of these types of contacts. So please share in the comments below. I try and read and respond to all comments. And I will look forward to maybe diving more deeply into rave cosmology with you. If you feel inspired by this information, you can feel free to email me and let me know a little bit more deeply what your journey has been like. And if this is something that speaks to you, I will. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do not forget to give us a like a thumbs up, share the video. And if you wanna be a part of our community, there are many, many ways to participate in our classes, in our Facebook group. So we would look forward to seeing you. Just go ahead and look in the description and you will find many ways that you can participate in going a little bit deeper with this intel. We love your questions, comments, your feedback. So go ahead and put them in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.